Okay, the very last sentence that I'm going to tell you about is the most complicated, as complicated as sentences get in English, and it's actually not that complicated. This is called the complex compound sentence. This is made up, as you might guess, of a complex sentence and a compound sentence. So, let's just recap. A complex sentence has the main clause, which is a set which could be a valid, sen valid sentence. Indiana slept. Indiana is the subject, and the predicate is what she did. She slept. And the dependent clause, the bit that could not stand on its own, hence dependent, is snoring all the while. Now that couldn't be a sentence of its own because it hasn't got a subject. It's just snoring all the while. It's, it's all predicate. And in fact, it isn't a complete action. It's an incomplete action. So that also wouldn't work. You couldn't say Indiana snoring all the while. It needs to actually be a completed action. A compound sentence is actually two sentences glued together. Here is our first sentence, which is Emmy Lou ate dinner. Our second sentence is Indiana slept. So Emmy Lou ate dinner, Indiana slept, and the joining word, the conjunction, is while. So that's what a complex is, that's what a compound is. A complex compound is the first sentence, Emmy Lou ate dinner, sentence number one, while, joining word, Indiana slept, and then the comment, snoring all the while. So that's what makes it complex and having two sentences is what makes it a compound. Now this is a nice short complex compound sentence but in sophisticated writing they could run to I don't know 150 sometimes you know 200 words in really complicated texts and this is how we this is in fact not a way to make really hard to read sentences but a way to pack a great deal of meaning into our sentences. So here's what we need in a complex compound. We need more than one subject. If Indiana and Emmy Lou are doing the same thing, then it's a simple sentence or a complex sentence perhaps. They need to have separate actions. So one person needs to be doing one thing, one person needs to be doing another. So more than one subject, more than one predicate. You've got to have a dependent clause, otherwise it's just a compound. And you've got to join them together properly using either a conjunction or a semicolon. So there are the things that we have to have, and that sounds kind of mechanical and a bit difficult, but it actually isn't. So let's look at a couple of them. Before lunch, before lunch is the dependent bit. The teacher yelled for quiet, that's what the teacher did. The students ignored him, that's what they did, and they're joined together by a conjunction. So we have dependent, independent, another independent, and a conjunction, so that is a compound, compound complex sentence or complex compound sentence. And again, that's a relatively simple one. Um, and that, actually, I'm just, yeah, that is in fact the last but one example. This is the last slide. So the teacher said the lesson was finished. The subject here is the teacher, and that's what he did. And the students left, comma, grateful that it was over. So that's our dependent clause the bit that can't stand alone, the little comment clause. There is the conjunction and the second sentence. And there is the first sentence. What did the teacher do? He said the lesson was finished. What did the students do? They left. And the comment is they were grateful that it was over. So there you have it. That is the as hard as it gets in English. The complex compound sentence.